Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new week of Morning Brew with Pastor Drew. Uh, all last week we were talking about uh, how we can effectively hear the voice of God. We looked at that wonderful passage in Scripture in 1 Samuel 3 that talks about the boy Samuel who's in the tabernacle in Israel uh, along with the old priest Eli and begins to hear God speaking to him. He's not sure it's God and eventually figures it all out and uh, he tells God, uh, is that you, Lord? Is that you? And as soon as he understands it is God speaking to him, he says, speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. I think there's nothing more important that we are able to effectively hear the voice of God speaking to us, especially personally. It's one thing for us to hear a message um, on a Sunday morning and feel it applies to everybody. It's, it's a whole different thing when God begins to take that word and, and press it into our own heart. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit today and next few days. It's really, really important. So don't, don't uh, slack off in watching this series. Make sure you see it right to the end because uh, maybe Friday will be the time that uh, God will speak to you directly about your own personal life. Uh, we talked about the importance of the Word of God. We, we, we understand that God speaks to us in different ways. And, uh, oh, and by the way, um, thank you so much for continuing to watch this broadcast. All you need is your Bible, a cup of coffee, or whatever you choose in the morning, an open heart and mind to hear the Word of the Lord. And if you want to share these broadcasts with your family and friends, just press that old share button next to the screen. I hope you also had a wonderful day yesterday at Memorial Day. Uh, I know we did, my wife and I did some traveling. Uh, we actually stopped at the graveside of uh, uh, William Pitts, Dr. Pitts, who wrote the famous song, Church in the Wildwood, a song that the little church that I pastor here at uh, Little Brown Church is all about. And we uh, took a couple of pictures there um, alongside the famous man's grave. And Sunday was a marvelous day. We had a wonderful service at the Little Brown and at St. John's, uh, uh, at Pleasant Hill, other church that I pastor here in Nashua. And uh, God just spoke to so many hearts uh, through the, the whole service and especially in the message where we talked about the great sacrifice that so many men and women have made to keep this country free. And then the greatest sacrifice of all, and that is uh, Lord Jesus allowing himself to be crucified for our sins in our place, granting to us uh, a realm of freedom that we could never have had without that. Now we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Because not only is the Word of God the way that God speaks to us, but He also speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Now, the Word of God, the Bible, is the primary and most reliable way that we can hear God's voice. And so last week I was pleading with you uh, to make sure that you read and study and memorize the Word of God. Uh, there are times in our life where we don't have the Scriptures beside us and we're maybe going through a trial, a problem, a situation in life, and we don't have our copy of the New Testament or Bible with us, uh, but we, we, we want to bring into that situation the Word of God. Well, the problem is, if we haven't memorized it, if it hasn't been hidden in our heart, like David said, he said, uh, Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's kind of hard for the Holy Spirit to bring into mind something we've not already memorized. And so that's why it's so important that we do that. It's also important, I believe, that when we are in that mode of being in the presence of God, uh, like young Samuel, that what we say to God is, Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. In most of our encounters with God and our devotions, it's more like, uh, Listen, God, for your servant speaketh. Uh, we tend a lot more time, spend a lot more time just talking to God than listening to God, His voice through His Word and by His Spirit. And so this morning we're going to talk about the ministry and the agency and the work of the Holy Spirit, if you will in our lives that enables us to hear the word of the Lord. <clears throat> uh, so the, the question is, as we kind of progress in this, who is the Holy Spirit? Well, if you're a, a believer, a Christian, you'll understand that he is the second person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In a sense, he is the member of the Trinity with which we have more of a personal relationship with because he lives inside us. Jesus made that promise to us that when he left, that the Holy Spirit would come and not only live with us, but be in us. He is the seal, if you will, of our salvation. But much more than that. The Father sent the Son, and the Son, the Lord Jesus, when he went back into heaven to be with his Father after the resurrection, said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you uh, without company. 
uh, without help, without comfort, I'm going to send another comforter just like me who's going to be with you and who's going to be in you. The work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life is absolutely essential. It's, un- it's essential that we know what he does, not only who he is, but how he functions within our lives. He baptizes us into God's family. He fills us. He gives us spiritual gifts. He produces the fruit of the Spirit in our life, love, joy, peace, and so on. He guides us. He teaches us. He comforts us. He sanctifies us. He empowers us for service. Uh, He assures us of our standing in Christ. He helps us in our prayer. The Bible says when we know not how to pray as we ought, the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Uh, He lives within us and he intercedes for us on our behalf, as I said. The Holy Spirit is indispensable to the life of the believer. We need to understand and to appreciate and appropriate the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. As God, the Holy Spirit can be worshipped. He is part of the Godhead. As God, the Holy Spirit can be prayed to, communicated with. Uh, We can ask and expect Him to speak to us, to lead us, to guide us. In fact, a major part of the Holy Spirit, uh, the ministry of the Spirit, is to guide and give direction to God's people. in many, <clears throat> excuse me, in many senses, <clears throat> in many senses, the book of the Acts of the Apostles could easily be renamed the Acts of the Holy Spirit, uh, because that is uh, exactly what he did for those early days of the lives of the apostles and the disciples as they were uh, putting into practice the word of Jesus, the commission of the Lord to go into all the world and preach the gospel without the direction of Holy Spirit that would have been, and the power of the Holy Spirit that would have been absolutely impossible. Just to give you a couple ideas of what he does before we go on tomorrow and talk about how he begins to speak in our lives. In Acts 8, he commands Philip to a desert place to wait for the Ethiopian eunuch. In Acts 10, he sends Peter to minister to Gentiles, to a Gentile centurion, Roman centurion. In Acts chapter 13, he, the Holy Spirit, separates Saul from their work at Antioch and commissions them for missionary service. In Acts chapter 16, he forbids Paul and Silas from entering a place called Bithynia and sending them over to the first ministry point in Europe, in Philippi. And then in Acts 20, 28, he appoints elders in the church. The Holy Spirit not only speaks words of direction, but he also speaks words of comfort to us. In John 14, 16, Jesus encourages the disciples by letting them know when he was going away, he's going to ask the Father to send another, as I said earlier, another comforter just like him who will be with you forever. That Greek word means of exactly the same kind. And so the thing I want to leave you with today is you develop your understanding and relationship with the Holy Spirit. You may ask the question, well, what's the Holy Spirit like? Well, he's just like Jesus. And how do I know that? Because Jesus said so. And so you can have security and comfort in knowing that when you interact with the Holy Spirit in your life, you're interacting with one who comes alongside, who identifies with us, with our concerns, with our problems, with our situations, who ministers to that just like the Lord. So we're going to continue this tomorrow, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, and God bless you, and by His grace, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.